What's up, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader here. Very proud of this video that I'm introducing right now. Um, this is from one of my hottest students in the challenge. If you click the link below, you can apply to join my challenge um, and be my next top student if you want it bad enough. Um, so the video that you're about to watch is very technical, um, but it's of Jack Kellogg and how he's made $6 million in six months. I wanted to do an intro just to put it in perspective because everybody wants to make six million in six months. Understand, Jack studied his butt off for years before this six month period. Also, this six month period that he reviews in this video, um, this is the hottest market that we've seen in decades, not just years. So as I always say, and I want you to actually leave a comment below this video, preparation meeting opportunity. Leave that comment below, three words, preparation, meeting, opportunity. Um, if you didn't make six million in the past six months, don't feel bad, okay? I didn't make six million in six months. Most people that I know didn't. Um, Jack really pushed himself, as you'll hear him detail in this video. Um, he had mono, he had strep throat. He literally like pushed himself to the max, physically, mentally. Uh, and when he says six months, you know, he's basically taking it easy now for the past two or three months. So trading is all about going hard when there's opportunity. It's not going hard nonstop 24 seven every single day, then you'll die an early death and the market will win. Um, I think it's really important to try to maximize when there are opportunities and when there's not so many great opportunities like the past month or two. Um, you know, Jack has been taking it easy, relaxing a little bit, still making money. I mean, like, I think last month I think he still made like $80,000, but that's easy for him because during his peak, when he was really pushing himself, I mean, he was making like four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 per day. Um, so that's the upside. Also, I want you to understand, some people say like, this is never gonna happen again, six million in six months is the best. This is a guy who just a few years ago was parking cars for a living. Lately, okay, he's you know becoming one of my new millionaire students, but this is the first time that he's really pushed it with position sizing in a hot market. He can always push himself now with position sizing, he has the account size, but this was his first time doing it. Yes, he was in the right place at the right time with a hot market. I mean, I've personally made basically a million dollars in the past six months and I trade so conservative and safely, it's, it's crazy. Several other students, you know, made millions. I now have over, um, you know, 20 plus millionaire students that have all been created in the past six, seven, eight, nine months. So Jack is not alone. But what I want you to understand is that even though six million in six months sounds amazing for penny stocks, that is not best case scenario, okay? I wish, I wish that Tim Grittani had partaken, you know? Some people, like you, you have family, like you gotta prioritize. No ill will for prioritizing family, that's what Tim Grittani did. I mean, he's already made 13 million, he, he's very low maintenance. But if, and I'm just speculating, if he had been around with these OTC plays, he could have made 100 million. He might have made 200 million. That's the upside potential in penny stocks that most people don't realize, okay? And I'm not saying everyone's gonna make 100 or 200 million. I'm not saying you're gonna become a millionaire. Never forget 90% of traders lose. So when you watch this video from Jack, understand that he pushed it probably the most out of any or mostly any penny stock trader I know. And yet, it's still not best case scenario. It should inspire you because there will be another hot market, there will be more plays, the question is will you be prepared? So watch Jack's video, leave a comment below saying preparation meets opportunity if you are ready to study when it's a little bit slower in trading and get your preparation levels up so that when there is the right setup, when there is the right hot sector, when the market is hitting with your favorite patterns, you can then push it too. That's all you can do, study up. Hey, what's going on guys? Jack Kellogg here. And today I'm gonna to go over something very special. I'm gonna share with you how I made over $6 million in the first six months of 2021, trading meme stocks and OTC penny stocks. This year was absolutely out of this world with trading opportunities. If you haven't been following, the overall stock market has just been on a roar since the COVID crash back in March and April of 2020. I started day trading in 2017 and 2018 and 
it wasn't all six million dollars in six months right away. I've been through a lot to get where I am. And if you're not familiar with my journey, please, please go back and watch some of my older YouTube videos and see when I was only making 10, 20,000 a month. And that was in 2020. So there has been a huge jump since around November, December of 2020. Today is actually September 4th, 2021. So it is three months after June 2021. And I'm just making this video because I absolutely burnt myself to a crisp the first six months of the year. And I took a lot of time off these past three months, but I'm finally feeling better, feeling energized, feeling passionate about trading again, because it takes a real toll on you to go your absolute hardest and leave nothing on the field, nothing in the market. I put every ounce of energy I had into this game. And as you guys can see from my PL tab here, there isn't one big trade that made me my six million dollars i have created a process over the past four years doing my due diligence tracking data experiencing the market and i have created this process that allowed me to really scale up when the liquidity and dollar volume was in the markets at the beginning of this year my biggest trade is just over a little over a quarter of a million dollars on TSNP in February of 2021. And I only have one other trade over 200,000 and that was in June on AMC. So today I'm gonna go over some of my statistics and then I'm gonna get into the, my three favorite patterns that I use to create the six million in profits. Then I'm going to end with my mindset on everything and how I reached this point. So to jump right into it, this is all of my trades in the first six months of the year from largest gain to largest loss. And if you look, it's actually under a thousand trades, 927 trades. It took me to make $6 million. So scroll back up to the top. I'll briefly talk about some of the data on this sheet. So this is just very basic information. As I said, I traded a lot of OTC stocks. As you can see here, it's mainly OTC on this left column. And if you want the exact number, I trade over 80% OTC to NASDAQ ratio. Now I still trade about 20% on the NASDAQ side but it's not really what I'm consider myself a master in. I consider myself one of the greatest OTC traders in this era that is public and shares their stuff openly. There is probably a lot of guys that don't share anything that are a lot, lot better than me at OTC, but I am fully transparent. I post all my trades on Profitly if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave the link in the description where I post every single one of my trades verified. So for all you guys that say I'm fake or this isn't real, this is real. This is 100% real. So these are my tickers that are my best. And as you can see, a lot of them are the same tickers and actually a little bit Later into the video, I will show you guys the charts and explain the patterns that I traded on these. I have a couple different brokers. I use E-Trade and Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading for short selling, they're a great broker, very good customer service. E-Trade is the best broker for OTC longs, in my honest opinion. If you're a US citizen, that is what I use. I'm not being paid anything to say that. That is just personally what I have found to be the best suited for me. I go long and short. I am not a biased trader at all. I like going both sides. I've actually made a little bit more money on the long side than the short side in my career. These are the trades that I made. If you guys want to pause the video, you can go look through all my trades here with my entries and exits, my PL, and then this is just tracking um, data to get these statistics over here. So this 
I want to explain really quick. This is my risk to reward ratio. So if my average loss is $4,500 on the year, this trade is 57 times that number. So my best trade, I made 57 times my average loss. And my average profit is about $12,000. So my risk to reward ratio isn't amazing. It's really good. I'm, I make over double what I lose. And it's actually a 2.62 if you're looking for the exact number. But it's not like I'm making five or ten times what I risk on an, an average trade. Like a lot of people swear by you should make 3x what you're risking. And that's what I try to keep my stats around. So getting into these statistics now, my average position size is much bigger than my average losing position size. And that is key. You cannot be sizing into a loser and hoping that you're going to get out of it for a win. I will only size into my winners because that's what I have the right read on. And I was actually discussing this with a few friends earlier today, and we were talking about how it's so key to go full size on your winners and not try to add, add, add to your losers. Actually, my number one rule is to cut my losses quickly and intelligently. So my average losing position size is actually only um, 200,000 is my average dollar that I put into the stock when I lose. And when I win, I have on average over a million dollars in the stock. Now, give or take, I take a lot of day trades during the day. So it adds up because these are my trades on the stock combined. So if I take you know, multiple hundred thousand dollar stabs during the day, I take it 10 times, it's going to be a million dollars. But it just shows you if I'm losing on the day, I'm going to stop trading that ticker very quickly. But if I'm winning on the day, I'm going to keep trading it because it's 500 times, I use 500 times more size on my winners. So that's what's key to take from that. Like I said, I trade OTC 80% of the time. And my NASDAQ and uh, listed it's not bad. If you see my profit factor is actually a 16 and my win percent is 74 on NASDAQ. So it is much better than my OTC statistics, but that's only because I'm so particular with which NASDAQs I'm going to trade because I know how dangerous NASDAQ can be. I could wipe out all of my gains on NASDAQ and I could in OTC too, but it's a lot harder in OTC because there's not that much liquidity to go all in for me but you could go all in on NASDAQ and you could wipe out all your gains. So I'm very particular because I don't want to fall into these big wins and big losses that a lot of NASDAQ traders and listed traders like to make. I like to stick with OTC. I have made over double the amount from in OTC from NASDAQ and my win percent is about 67. So my win percent is about five or 6% lower and my profit factor is a lot less it's only a four and this is a 16 so my nasdaq profit factor is four times as bigger and it's just something to note it's because i do have a few really large losses in otc but in nasdaq i'm not trading it as much if i did trade nasdaq as much i think i would have a lot larger losses and moving into my long versus short like i was telling you i am I made most of my money this first half of the year trading on the long side, double like than the short side. My win percent is actually only a 66. So I went about two thirds of my trade and on the short side, I went about three fourths of my trades on the short side. And I know a lot of you guys are like, why are your numbers smaller if they're better on the opposite? Like I trade OTCs and I go long and my numbers like are smaller than my shorts and my NASDAQ trades. But like I said, that's just because I'm so particular in what I'm going to trade. And if I'm going to take a bad trade, it's probably going to be an OTC and it's probably going to be long. So overall win percent, 68, 68 and my overall P&L, over $6 million. I'm, that means I'm averaging $1 million per month the first six months of the year. And I'm averaging $250,000 per week. And if you do that math, that's $50,000 per day. Now, let that sink in. I averaged... 50,000 per day for six months straight trading OTC penny stocks and NASDAQ stocks. 
it just absolutely blows my mind that you can make this amount of money in this untapped niche in my opinion there is not many people doing this nobody that i know from my personal life ever even thought about day trading they just go to college they get a normal job guess what i'm making salaries every other day and i'm making a decent salary every day it's just absolutely crazy to me so now to get into some of my trades and some of my patterns so i'm going to go over my three favorite patterns guys are you guys ready for this here they are so there's three patterns and i'm going to briefly describe to you what i look for in the mindset of the trade so the first trade that i'm looking for is the swing trade and there are a few things that fundamentally drive these trades where it's not all about the chart pattern. Whereas these two, these two patterns are more about the chart pattern. So with the swing trade, I'm looking for a hot sector, right? There's been a lot of hot sectors this past year with coronavirus stocks, with electric vehicle stocks, with cannabis stocks, with crypto stocks. So what I'm looking for are these penny stocks, ideally the lowest price possible. Like I love trading, I love swing trading stocks that are underneath a penny because the upside potential is huge compared to the risk. And you're able to make, you know, a few hundred to a thousand percent. And I've personally made five, uh, 1 thousand percent a few times and I made a lot of 500, 600, 700 percent trades with this strategy. So pay attention because this is actually one of my favorite strategies to trade when it's working because it's so much fun when you make 10x your money on a trade so now to get into the technical standpoint i'm looking for that hot sector and i'm looking for some sort of catalyst driven move for the first initial pop so the stock goes up and then i'm keeping it on watch for it to create some sort of base down here with sustained volume and if it does create this base then I'm looking for a big move upwards because, you know, people remember this and it's holding very well. So it usually creates another run. So if I'm able to buy in here on the dips into the support level and risk, you know, down here, I'm able to create this massive risk to reward situation where I'm getting in here, I'm risking the support level and my upside is unlimited. And especially with these low price stocks, they love to run multiple hundreds of percent, like I was saying. And now getting into the breakout trades. So the breakout trades are a little bit different. They're kind of like the swing trade, but with the breakout trades, I'm looking for a stock that is probably more expensive where it's between like a penny to 10 cents to a dollar, even multiple dollars a share. I will tra take this pattern with a swing trade. I'm looking primarily specifically for stocks underneath a penny. So the breakout I'm looking for when it breaks over these highs, I'm looking for taking a smaller piece of the move. So I'm looking to buy somewhere in here and risk this support level instead of trying to anticipate it. So that's the key difference between these two strategies is I'm buying the breakout and I'm taking a more conservative trade rather than trying to, you know, hit the entire home run. And you, you may ask, why do I do this? Because, I'm not just going to buy every single stock in the market and some of these might not be in a hot sector. So it's just not as obvious to me. Swing trades. I do a lot of research on to figure out what my favorite are, but I will play any technical breakout and try to capitalize on a nice single or double. And the breakouts are actually my most profitable strategy this year. And that is because there are so many of them and they were working so well. And then my last strategy is max euphoria. And this strategy is basically once they do make these huge runs, you're like, what next? Do they keep going up? Do they keep, do they ever pull back? Well, guess what guys? Stocks don't go straight up and they don't go straight down. So they are going to pull back at some point. And once it reaches the top up here, then I'm looking to short sell. And if you don't know what short sell is, pause the video right now and Google what is short selling. So I'm going to short the stock up here and buy to cover on this massive crash. And this is a great opportunity because it's very high odds win percent because stocks aren't going to go straight up. But once they do go straight up, there's going to be a pullback. And this is the pullback I'm looking to capitalize on. 
and then once it does crash there's usually a big inefficiency because so many people are selling so then you get a nice bounce upward and then you're able to trade this this uh, bouncy bouncy ball type momentum and this is the strategy that I traded to make six million dollars in six months all it was was just trading these human emotions patterns that repeat over and over again so I had to pull this chart up for you guys this is actually the exact pattern that I trade right where I'm looking for the swing trade somewhere in this sideways action where the smart money and the institutional money is getting in but I'm doing it on a smaller scale in these penny stocks and then here is the breakout when it's you know in the mania phase and you have to look for a quicker trade since you're technically not buying it at the very bottom so it's harder to hold if it does turn you're not really sure when the top's going to be in but once it does top this is what i'm saying when it has that big pullback and the bounce and then keeps on collapsing and as you can see if you want to pause the screen right here and read off all the emotions and then you'll understand you know why this happens over and over and over again and these patterns have been happening for multiple decades ever since humans have been trading because you know we all are all very emotional when you think about it we all have the same emotions we all want to make money we all want to get in on the next on the next stock and you know this is just a supply and demand type game so once you know the demand isn't there anymore and it's so expensive and the valuation is so high it's going to crash and then everybody that you know has been buying it is going to sell and that's what creates that movement to the downside so those are my favorite three patterns that i used to make all of my money and it's the process that i've been talking about what i've been doing for you know three or four years so now to get into some of my trades i'm going to talk about these on a chart of an actual chart of these stocks but I'm just gonna briefly describe it TSNP was a breakout trade for me AMC was max euphoria and these trades I got two chances at the max euphoria pattern with AMC OZSC was a panic dip buy um, AMC was this was a breakout on AMC AMC was actually my best ticker I've made over a million dollars on AMC AMC this was another max euphoria pattern so I did really really well on it um, in this stretch I actually made a million in four days on AMC HIPH and BBRW were two swing trades I put around ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars into these stocks and I was able to make 10x that and I will show you guys exactly what the chart looks like window created the max euphoria pattern like three times and I'll show you how I was able to capitalize on it each time and OZSC this was a breakout great trade Bant was a swing trade and TGGI was a swing trade as well and as you can see these you see I'm playing multiple fractions of a penny um, three zeros before the first number and those were the patterns that I traded and now I'm actually going to go as far and I'm going to show you the exact numbers. So if I go into pattern performance, as you can see, the OTC breakout, I made $1.2 million on. And the dip buy, I've made $725,000 on. The swing trade, $940,000. And then all of these right here, this is just different names, but this is for the Max Euphoria pattern. I've made a lot of money on it in OTC and in NASDAQ, over a million dollars and the uh, breakout on the listed side you know another 200k and then the dip by 300k so those are my main strategies and now i'm going to go into the charts guys i'm going to show you exactly what the charts were so here is amc and all these charts look very similar as you can see they all spike up big and then they all pull back like i was showing you with you know these patterns now look at this and look at these charts guys right so this is the max euphoria pattern where it, it did have a breakout and I did capitalize on this breakout um, over 20 and over 37 but as you can see this stock spikes straight up for multiple days 
and then I'm looking for that pullback day and I nailed it this day and usually it will keep fading off, right? But this stock held and had a massive move to the upside, doubling again, and then it eventually hit the top and it dwindled off after creating multiple higher lows. And GME as well did the same exact thing. This stock was absolutely wild. As you can see, the volatility was just unreal from 20 bucks all the way up to 500 in just a week or two. And it created this day with massive range, hitting a low of 110 from 500. So it moved quite literally like 500 points that day, like up and down. It was just absolutely wild. I wish I personally went bigger that day, but I was a little timid because I just didn't understand what was happening that day. So these are just absolutely max euphoria. Wall Street bets, thank you so much for running this up, guys. Like, it was just absolutely unreal to witness. It was so, so cool. Moving on now to the swing trades. So like I was saying, here's the first pop, and this is actually a shrooms play, and shrooms got really, really hot. And as you can see, this you know is significantly under a penny. And it was creating that base like I was talking about, so I started buying in here and it actually just did this massive 10x move and i sold out um from a, around a penny and a half a little bit higher and it was just an absolutely unreal trade it was so so fun to be a part of and here's tggi which was really cool a lot of patience on this one this one was actually a very small pop right here and not many people were watching this but i saw the company was a a weed company and i saw that they were trying to go current um, they were trying to become legit so I bought it down here in at around 0.0006 and when it did pop I only sold very small because I had a feeling that this was going higher and I was able to hold through this dip and sell out the rest of my shares towards a penny and it topped perfectly at a penny it was a great trade um, it took a couple months so it took a lot of patience moving on to HMBL my biggest trade which was a breakout and as you can see, it, it was TSNP, but they changed their company. So now the ticker symbol is HMBL. But this is the stock chart that I was able to capitalize so well on. And I was so familiar with it because if you count one, two, three breakouts, and I was able to watch it for a month. And when I made my big money, I bought this breakout and I held. And I basically bought it and sold all the way up to the top and it was a great trade for me over two hundred fifty thousand dollars in these four days of buying and selling um, this breakout and it was a great trade OZSC was also a really good one the stock was trading a billion shares per day down near a penny and as you can see one two three huge breakouts went all the way to 50 cents and it was just a great trading opportunity because it was trading so much volume and it was a great trade and now getting into window which is a max euphoria pattern and the stock was known to be really sketchy so i was very short bias on it and i actually ended up shorting it this day at 10 for a really nice gain and it tanked almost 50 percent within two days and then it held up and did it again and I used the same mindset that, hey, it had two big red days, so I think it's going to have two big red days again after going straight up. And it tanked, you know, uh, almost another 50%. And then it did it one more time, and it tanked again another 50%. So it did the same pattern three times in a row. And on this day, I was so sure. I had my first six-figure short on this around the end of February, and that was a really, really good trade, a lot of fun. And now this, I had to show you guys. I actually didn't even show you in the Excel because I was so excited talking about all the winners. But MMNFF was actually my biggest loss ever. And I got absolutely obliterated on it, guys. I lost 367,000 or 81 times my average loser. And as you can see, my second biggest loss is only 12 times my average loser. But this stock, I, I was having a great week. It was February 11th. And I I just bought so many shares because I thought I, it was going to bounce because it was a perfect euphoria pattern of straight up. And I did short it actually at 130 and I covered it at like 80 or 90 cents. And then I bought it down here into the support. But guess what? 
this isn't an exact science guys it doesn't happen every single time and this stock absolutely crushed my soul and I ended up taking the loss somewhere down here in the 50 to 60 area from around 75 80 entry with way too much size and I, I absolutely got crushed and the stock actually never ended up really bouncing much until they got bought out by some company and they had a little spike but not even over the high so like I wouldn't even have had a chance to hold it and get out for break even so that's why my number one rule is to cut losses quickly and not just hold and hope for these to come back because I'd still be holding MMNFF to this day praying it would come back and now getting into mindset that takes such an emotional toll on you to just hold and hope and your emotions have to be in check you have to be winning and making good trades because if you're in a bad mindset you're absolutely going to make very poor decisions and once I took this big loss I really took my pedal off the gas and I sized back down actually this week when I took that $367,000 loss I still ended up being one of my best weeks ever over a million dollars on the week and after that I really took my foot off the gas because I didn't want to think oh I have to make this money back right now and do all this I didn't I took it very slow and I built myself back up I built that momentum back up something I want to talk about for psychology is you know trading is a lot of momentum just like you know basketball if you guys have watched basketball you know that if somebody's hot from you know downtown they're hitting a lot of threes like that's when you'd want to be pushing like a lot of size on your trades because you're really hot you're in the groove you're doing really well but if you can't even make a layup you're not gonna try to you know shoot a three-pointer in the next player you're gonna you're gonna have to build your momentum up and that is very very key now something that I want to go back and talk about a little bit is the toll this took on me to go and try so so hard at one point I was swinging over 70 stocks and I was you know in my day trading account had another five to ten stocks overnight and I was day trading ten stocks and I just wasn't you know exercising I wasn't eating well and that's one regret that I have because it really destroyed my my body and my mind and it was very very tough after the market was over just to relax because I was so into it and I just felt so you know piss poor after this I had to really relax for three months and really you know detox from all of this because I had been going hard all of 2020 as well and all of 2019 and all of 2018 and all of 2017 and I only started with you know a few thousand dollars in 2017 and I saved up for my valet job and I got enough money in 2018 to start with 30k and from there it was still you know ups and downs for six seven eight months but after around 20 months I had my first very consistent month and then the rest is history from there and it's just building myself up again and again and taking a little bit more size and really pushing myself you know to be one of the best I wanted to you know my goal I've always had is I want to be really good at something really hard because if I love it I know that I'll be able to put everything I got into it and that's what I've done in 2021 these first six months and I just blew away like what I thought was even possible I really haven't you know seen anybody do this um, publicly in the OTC land making this magnitude of money now Tim Grittani he's up 13 million he's you know a god trader but he's been just really consistent over the years I just went really really hard for six months and you know it takes a toll on you so I really hope you guys like this video and if you do like it please 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 subscribe and please drop some likes if this video gets over a thousand likes you know I'll think about making another video because I actually enjoy doing this I hadn't I haven't made one about trading and a very long time maybe we can talk about you know the last three months and you know rewarding myself so I hope to see you guys next time and if you guys want to follow more and learn more about me 
I'll have some links below to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Later!